Storage Wars attracted tons of fans who loved the mystery of what might be in those lockers. The idea that in some backwater shed there might be something very valuable, priceless, one of a kind even. Really, it's nothing short of the American dream. But there is another reason people love to watch Storage Wars. And this one isn't quite as noble. In their tireless bargain hunting, the stars of Storage Wars often butt heads hard. You take those colorful, ambitious folks, mix them up with the opportunity to win big, and you're bound to see some fireworks. And remember, the camera only shows so much. National broadcasters are limited by their need to stick to the script, attract ads, and save the children. Won't somebody think of the children? And because of these constraints, we only see a tiny slice of the real drama that happens on Storage Wars. So today we're peeling back the curtain and taking a deeper look at some of the biggest brawls. From violent fights to big money corporate showdowns. Let's open some storage lockers to see what's inside. As we all learn the dark truths about storage wars. Allegations, lies, and secrets abound as we peer into the seedy underbelly of reality TV. Before we begin, please hit the thumbs up icon if you enjoy our content. And subscribe to the channel for more deep dives like this. Now let's see what's in store as we go find out. What, what happened? happened? Round 1, Palm Springs Throwdown, Season 8, Episode 7. It all started out as just another day on Storage Wars. The group eagerly crowded the locker, the auctioneer rattled off some numbers, and the bidders did their thing. Or at least they tried to. Popular cast member Mary tries to get a bid in, but Dan, the auctioneer, ended it abruptly, claiming he didn't hear her at all. And re-watching the video, I can see both sides. Mary does noticeably make bids, but she does so in a quiet, almost shy manner. What do you think? Was Mary getting screwed or was she just not making her bids public enough? Either way, things got spicy. Enter Dave. If you've ever watched the show, you know how contentious of a personality Dave has. Some people love the guy, he's got charisma and swagger, while others deride him as a tacky bully who only looks out for himself. So I guess everyone hates that guy? Yes. For very good reason. Really? Ruthless? Morally reprehensible? Again, I see both sides. In a surprisingly nice guy move here, Dave decided to stand up for Mary and audibly voiced his concerns. This is when Dan's wife Laura gets involved and things escalated. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. It didn't take long for the gang to put the war back into storage wars. Now, fights on TV are often made out to be more serious than they really are. Some ominous background music and shaky camera work, replaying the most dramatic moments, and cutting it all together to make it look like a brutal beating. But upon close analysis of this footage, it seems there's more than just camera trickery at play. Laura smacks Dave over the head several times and he throws her down, pretty, pretty hard to the concrete below. Actual blows are exchanged and Laura goes down hard. Fortunately, the crew intervenes because that's what they get paid to do. And the fight does stop before more serious violence can occur. But it's events like this that really show you why Storage Wars is one of the more dramatic and complex reality shows. Nobody is clearly in the right here. Dave seems to be helping Meek Mary out of the goodness of his heart. But it's also possible that the provocateur was just finding an excuse to get into it with Dan. What do you think? Do you remember this bout? Let us know in the comments. Round 2. Motormouth Dave Strikes Again. Season 5, Episode 21. Surprise, surprise, another fight involving good old Dave. But to really understand this one, you have to first understand Dave. 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 Dave! And to understand Dave, you have to understand this. When he's at work, he isn't just showing up and making bids. He's promoting a whole brand. His shirt, his hat, his car. They all have trademark catchphrases. His yup emblazoned on them. 
And Dave's brand is more than just his image. It's about portraying himself as a guy who won't put up with anybody's crap, as well as a guy who can do whatever he wants without facing repercussions. This time, Dave doesn't claim to be fighting for a fellow bidder's rights. The only thing he's really concerned about is his right to say whatever the heck he wants. But if Dave thinks he can just yup his way to the top today, he is dead wrong. Because he's got some fiery competition. His rival in round two isn't a fellow bidder at all. It is the auctioneer herself. Dave makes an attempt for the upper hand by hawking his personal auction business while at another auction, which is kind of a big no-no in the field. The auctioneer tells him to cut it out, and Dave makes it clear that he won't let anybody tell him what to do. She finishes her spiel with a flourish, and Dave is escorted out. Okay, now shut up. You don't tell me to shut up or I'll tell you to get out of my auction, how's that? Does he still have the upper hand? This interaction, like many of Dave's, is murky. It's unfortunate when co-stars Jared and Brandy accuse Dave of acting aggressively towards the woman. What do you think? Is this true? Dave does get in her face, although it's unclear what his intentions are because of the messy camera work. Take that, camera guys. No matter what went down in that room, at the end of the fight, we're left with a chilling image. Dave being escorted out by security. Of course, continuing to run his mouth, wearing a big fat grin the whole time. Yup. It really drives home the point that Dave will truly do anything to keep his power. Round 3. Dave versus Storage Wars. Now, everybody knows reality TV often takes liberties with the whole reality thing. When most people watch The Bachelor, they accept the characters on the show are, in some ways, characters. They are pushed into different activities, behaviors, conversations from the producers and the show. And every character is given a gimmick. But shows like Storage Wars are a bit different. While we do accept that producers may cut footage or encourage certain behaviors, we here believe that the basic premise of the show, bidding on crap from storage lockers, is true. Without that basic core of a fact, the show wouldn't mean very much. It would be about as interesting as an opera about flea markets. But that's exactly what was alleged by one famous, or should I say infamous, cast member. And the person stirring up trouble is exactly who you'd expect. That's right, it's Dave Kowalski. Sorry, sir, no clue. In 2012, Dave took it upon himself to spill some secrets about the show's inner workings. He claimed that A&E frequently snuck valuable items into storage lockers to raise the stakes. And while that doesn't sound like the most heinous crime, mm, think about it. Again, if you can't trust the basic premise of the show, you kind of can't trust anything which is just what Dave claimed. In addition to planting jewels and other items, he also said the network scripted most interviews and on-screen scenes. They were so focused on the artifice of the show, he said, that they paid for a cast member's plastic surgery. This raises lots of questions about how Dave was portrayed on Storage Wars. Because on the show, he's portrayed as a money-hungry brute who takes pleasure in his own unpleasantness. So based on what he's claiming, how much of this reality is Dave? And how much is it meddling editors and execs conspiring to make someone a monster? Looking back at the fierce fights in this video, Dave was the antagonist. But what was really happening behind the scenes? Is it possible A&E purposefully manipulated hours and hours of footage, taking only the nastiest bits just so they could have their perfectly evil cartoon villain? What if it turns out he's just a decent dude? Maybe a little rough around the edges, who's just been the victim of a smear campaign. Now that might be going a bit far. I don't think it's likely that Dave is secretly some philanthropist. I don't know how many Make-A-Wish kids would want him by their bedside instead of Batman. But if you're even slightly a critical thinker, his allegations do make you think twice. The strangest thing about the saga is what happened after. It had been a year away from the camera, before Dave returned to Storage Wars like nothing ever happened. So I guess as much as Dave likes causing trouble, I'm sure he likes attention and money a whole lot more. So if you expected Dave to be featured heavily in this scrappy episode, you weren't wrong. The bombastic buyer earned all three spots, showing he's as ready to spar in the courtroom as he is in one of the facilities. Dave teaches us a valuable lesson about the world today. It doesn't matter all that much what people think of you. Most people are always so concerned about what others think, as if it actually matters at all.
But Dave has made his mark by providing that the only reliable way to make a name for yourself in America is to go out and get what's yours. To hell with what everybody else thinks. You might not like it, but Dave will be counting his money for years to come. All right, enough of me, now we wanna know your thoughts. Do you think Dave's allegations against the show are true? If so, why did he return? And who is your favorite on Storage Wars? Dave, Jared, Brandy, did we miss a great Storage Wars fight? Get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts. But before you go, please hit the thumbs up icon if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.